Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Test Route channel. I've been on kind of a streak lately, doing lots of reviews. I was going to switch it up, but for now I think I'm going to keep on going. It's because I saw a new book that I wanted to read and possibly review. And this was from an interview on the Radio Retrofuture YouTube channel by Bonsart Bokel. I highly recommend that one, definitely check it out. They were talking about this author's new book. The, the author was being interviewed, rather. And I thought, sounds interesting. I'm going to give it a read. The name of the book is The Engineer's Apprentice by J.R. Martin. The Engineer's Apprentice came out just last year, 2023, from... Underdog Press, LLC. I assume that's some kind of independent concern like my own. But he did his homework and he got some good reviews from Publishers Weekly, etc. Which is something I should have thought of. <laughs> it is listed as book one in the series, so I assume there are more to come. First of all, it is a Western-themed steampunk and I have a weakness for that in particular stuff that happens in the old west of the USA. And this one takes place in Dallas, Texas in the 1860s. Like any good steampunk, you got to have some changing of history. It's got to be alternate in some way. The difference here is that the Native Americans were able to stop the white encroachment into their lands somewhere around the Great Plains. So Texas is about where it stopped. How did they do that? First of all, they banded together instead of fighting each other like they did in the real history. <laughs> I've often said that, you know, if they'd stuck together and not waited until like 1890 when they finally started wanting to cooperate with this ghost dance cult, that they might have actually achieved something. Unfortunately, they didn't, at least unfortunately for them. Anyway... Besides this, the natives have another thing in their favor. They have the ancient lore of runes, uh, that is, magical symbols. And this kind of harkens back to Scandinavia. There was a lot of that back then. You know, my ancestral people, they believed that these runes had magical powers. We don't really know how this came upon the Indian tribes, how they got into that, but... Who knows? Either they discovered it independently, or perhaps Leif Erikson brought it with him. <laughs> anyway, besides that, they have a third thing. They have meteorites called star metal. And these they can fashion into objects which may be inscribed with runes and may be even more powerful and allowed them to erect a mystical barrier that keeps those settlers out. The engineer in the title is Issa Obasi, who hails from Africa, in what we now call Nigeria. Obasi left his home in part because he didn't want to follow in his father's footsteps. He was a general, and in his family you also had to use the runes, and he didn't have a talent for it. He just couldn't do it for whatever reason. Instead he thought, you know, I know math. I can do that. So I'm going to go to America and I'm going to become a master engineer and I'm going to invent stuff. So that's what he does. He's a steam engineer. The narrator, however, is his apprentice, who is named Annie Saktavong. And she came to Texas with her family from Siam, which we now call Thailand. Annie is also escaping her family. And her destiny, her you know, pre-programmed life, was supposed to be a sword maiden which is kind of cool. It's a woman who's schooled in the martial arts so you can fight with swords and all that good stuff. And she will become a bodyguard and usually a wife of a wealthy merchant and help you know, protect his business and property. And in Siam, they could have multiple wives. So her destiny was to become one of several wives just like her father has. And she didn't want to do that. And she didn't really want to be you know, killing people either. She wanted also to invent things, especially robots, automatons, and metal men, that sort of thing. So she wants to have a master engineer she can apprentice with. She asks her professor. He recommends Obasi. Now, why do they end up together? Because, for one, 
no other male engineer wants to take on a woman. <laughs> and number two, Obasi's an outsider, and he's black, which basically means he can't be that picky. So one of the things that impressed me the most about The Engineer's Apprentice was that although the author, J.R. Martin, is an African-American, unlike some black sci-fi writers I've encountered, he doesn't seem overly obsessed with racism. You know, of course, it's got to be a factor in this story. It's historical, after all, and it just wouldn't seem real if it wasn't. But it's more character-driven. It's more like these people have their own concerns, and they've got to overcome other obstacles, not just, you know, not just the white man's power system, you know. <laughs> and in this world, slavery did exist in America, but it ended not with a war, but because steam technology progressed such that slavery was basically obsolete. It was too much trouble. And indeed, in my study of history, it seems that slavery would have eventually gone away anyway, because it just wasn't economically feasible after a point. So a lot of these freed slaves, these freedmen, they came out west to make their way. Some of them settled in Texas. Others went beyond, beyond the border into the native lands. I'm not quite sure why the natives decided to tolerate them. In a lot of the books I've read, the Indian tribes used to pretty much view the Blacks is just a darker form of white people. <laughs> so, you know, not us, in other words. But we'll just take it for granted. Yeah, they said, okay, you guys can settle here. You know, just, you know, just, we're still in charge, of course. Now, the story involves a burglary of Issa's workshop in which some of his blueprints are stolen. Now, that's a big concern because... These are his inventions. He's worked his butt off making these, and he doesn't want people to profit from them. We're still do something nefarious with them. The bigger mystery is that the perpetrator was a native. They witnessed him do it, but he could walk through walls so they couldn't catch him. They couldn't stop him. It was strange. You know, they had never seen anybody with so much magical power, even though a lot of his people did have you know, magical abilities, nothing like that before. So the question is, who is this man? What's his motivation? Is he working on behalf of some larger conspiracy? Annie, who has kind of a strange relationship with her family, she wonders if her father might have had something to do with it, even though he claims to have been victimized by this same guy stealing stuff. So they got to find answers. And in their search, the two of them need to go to the native lands where they may not receive such a warm welcome. you got to read the book to find out. I don't give any spoilers. In general, The Engineer's Apprentice is an absorbing story in which Annie and Issa are both struggling with their heritages, with their own, you know, pre-planned destinies. They want to make their own way and they want to become themselves, but still they have these other tendencies. And of course, they have to struggle with society at large, but the struggle is more internal and, and in order for these very different people to get along, too, the two of them. And one thing I really liked about Martin's writing is that his descriptions are especially good. In, indeed, his character descriptions, as I was saying, good characters, their mannerisms, the way he describes uh, their, you know, their facial expressions and their, their, um, posture and so on, this goes a long way to tell us what the emotions of the characters are. And it's a difficult thing. We all strive to do that, to show, not tell, but it's not easy. You don't just want to say, you know, Issa was angry. <laughs> no, you want to show how angry he was. And if there was any flaws in this book, and nothing's perfect, of course, it was that I thought the plot was perhaps a little bit predictable. For example, if we have two single people working together, is this relationship going to go somewhere? Is it going to become more than professional? And if it does, of course, there's issues with that. You know, because even in this day, we'd consider it improper for, you know, a master to be messing around with his apprentice. Furthermore, there's a difference in their ethnic backgrounds, which at that time would have been a bigger obstacle than it would be now. 
there are times where I felt that their attitudes, that the characters' attitudes, you know, Issa and Annie in particular, their attitudes about sex and propriety were a little too modern. <laughs> and not so much so that it took me out of the story, but it was a little bit different. You know, you would be really worried about what people would say. You know, that's why these engineers wouldn't take on a woman, not because they hated women or because they thought women were stupid, although some of them probably did think that. It's because the tongues would wag. People would say, what's he doing with that girl? <laughs> All alone, unchaperoned. That can't be tolerated. And so it's kind of amusing. Now, I haven't read anything else by J.R. Martin, and, and as far as I can tell, this is his first novel. Though he has written some short stories, four different collections appear on Amazon with his stories in them. Two of them are his collections that he himself edited. Uh, the Underdogs Rise, I believe they're called, and I'll put up the covers of those. It sounds interesting. It's kind of just like a general sci-fi. Seems like he was in a writer's group in Texas, or he knew a lot of fellow writers, and they kind of got together, and some of these stories are basically his colleagues, and very few people I've heard of, but it'll be interesting to see. All in all, The Engineer's Apprentice is a thoroughly enjoyable first effort. So this has been my review of J.R. Martin's The Engineer's Apprentice, published in 2023. Let me know what you think about it in the comments and please like and subscribe and please also check out my works on amazon the links are in the description but before i go i've got a quick announcement there have been too many editing tasks i've got that have been piling up and there's some stories i mean to publish that i just have not been able to get to too many irons in the proverbial fire so i have decided to put the channel on hiatus for the rest of august that is four weeks, and I will be back in September after Labor Day. So look forward to that, and also look forward to some of my new releases coming soon. For now, the Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.